Welcome back to another episode of the Sarasota County Schools In Tune podcast. I'm Chris Parento with Sarasota County Schools and your host for today's episode. Joining me today is Deb Jackalone, our district's executive director of student services, to talk about a very important topic, mental health and well-being, and the services that we offer within our school district. Deb, thank you so much for being here. Over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of talk about mental health and well-being and the impacts that it can have on students in the classroom setting. Can you just talk a little bit about that and how much things have changed recently from not only a student perspective, but also just an overall focus? You are absolutely right. Over the last four years, we have seen tremendous impacts by the events that our community has experienced. It started in 2020 with the COVID-19 pandemic, and we quickly had to navigate that pandemic while shifting to a virtual teaching and learning experience for our students, our staff, and our families. And then shortly after that, here in Sarasota, we faced the devastating impact of Hurricane Ian. Those three events in itself created opportunities. We like to say that with every challenge comes an opportunity. And in Sarasota County, we've been reaffirmed with some of our core beliefs that relationships are at the cornerstone of all of the work that we do. And by capitalizing on those relationships and realizing how important they are to our student mental well-being, we've been able to do three things that I think are really critical to this conversation. The first thing that we've been able to do is elevate an awareness to mental health. And we've done that by having open, honest, transparent conversations that are based on facts. And when you do that, you're able to do number two. We're able to reduce the stigma that is often associated with mental health. And then third, and most importantly, we've been able to move from that cycle of reaction to being more proactive. And as educators, we do two things really well. We prevent and we intervene when appropriate and necessary. How important is that proactive portion of it to catch things before you get to the reactive stage? I think it's critically important that we we focus on our prevention and intervention activities. Um, the earlier we intervene, the more chance we have for long-term success for every student. And by focusing on the right things at the right time, it allows for us to prepare our students for the life and the goals that they want to achieve and accomplish. You mentioned relationships. Can you talk about the importance of students having somebody they feel comfortable talking to at home and at school if they have anything they're going through? Having that one key relationship with a positive adult in your life absolutely can change your long-term outcomes. Um, It gives you a safe person to have conversation and dialogue with. It can serve as a mentor for you and provide you with opportunities that may not otherwise exist. It is absolutely the most important thing we can do for our students here in Sarasota. I know we have a lot of great partners throughout the district within the community that help with mental health and well-being services throughout our school district. Can you talk about those and what those services offer to our students on a daily basis? Yes, we have um, a great community here in Sarasota, and there are so many wonderful agencies and um, community partners who want to work with our students and with our families and with our staff. So these partnerships allow us to expand the supports and services that are available for our students and our families throughout the community. You mentioned parents, and naturally parents know their students better than anybody, but they may not know mental health as well as anybody. Where are some places they can go to get information on things to look for so that they're not just thinking, oh, maybe my son or daughter's having a bad day or a bad week? Chris, I am so thankful that you asked that question. Um, I talked about relationships a, a little bit at the beginning, and I also talked about being proactive. The very best place parents can start are, is at their child's school. Every school has qualified teachers, administrators, school counselors, school social workers, and school psychologists, behavior specialists that are available to be a sounding board and a support system for our parents. If parents are uncomfortable exploring that avenue, parents and students and families can access our resources by visiting the Sarasota County Schools webpage at www.sarasotacountyschools.net and go specifically to the student services page. 
on the student services page, we have a section called resources. And within that section, you will find a ton of resources that are available for our not only our students, but our families. There are community resources, there are state resources, and even national resources. And if I can ask everybody who's listening to please take out a pen or get the notes section of your phone ready, um, there's I, I want to share three or four really important resources that I consider um, critical for everybody in our community to know about. Um, the very first one is a suicide and crisis hotline. That number is 988. That number can be dialed from any location 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and you will immediately be connected to a crisis counselor. If you're not a person who likes to make phone calls or feels comfortable making phone calls, you can text the keyword HOME, H. O-M-E to the number 741-741 and immediately be connected to a crisis counselor. The third resource that I want to draw our community listeners' attention to is something called Hope Florida. Hope Florida is a network of navigators that are designed to help reduce barriers. So if you're seeking financial assistance, if you need help finding a new doctor, you can access Hope Florida via our webpage. We have three flyers on there that are written in Spanish, English, and Haitian Creole to serve the needs of our community. In the state of Florida recently, the Department of Education introduced the Resiliency Toolkit, and they've given that resource to districts to utilize in their schools. Can you talk a little bit about what that toolkit is and how we're using it throughout the district? Yes, um, we're super excited that this year we have been able to introduce resiliency standards to our students. And we teach those standards mostly by accessing the resources that are available through the Department of Ed Resiliency Toolkit. Anybody, um, our staff members, our parents, our community partners can access this toolkit via the Florida Department of Education website and just type in the keyword resiliency toolkit and the toolkit pops up. Within that toolkit, there are four key components um, embedded in there. The first one has to do with character education. So there's resources that are centered around character education. The second one has to do with personal responsibility. The third one has to do with critical thinking and problem solving. And then the last resource is centered around citizenship and mentorship. And embedded within this toolkit are resources and strategies, lessons that you can work with your student on to better develop the skills that they need to live a successful and productive life. We always talk about students and achievement and graduation rates and test scores and all of these different things that they're having to do in the classroom. How much does that have an impact on their mental health on a day-to-day basis? I'm so glad you asked that question. Um, I, I, I hear you ask um, in general about students, and everybody has a different um, response to stress and pressure. So the most important things that we can do as educators is one, form those really important relationships with our students so we know who they who they are and what they need and we're able to give them what they need when they need it. The second thing is recognizing that every person responds to stress and pressure in different ways, and everybody has different coping strategies. So as educators, we need to teach our students those strategies and those um, coping skills that they need to successfully navigate any pressure or stress that comes their way. Is there somebody specific at their school that a student should be reaching out to, or is it uh, a more broad that if they have an issue, and uh, somebody will be there for them. I am very proud that in Sarasota County Schools, all of our staff are trained professionals who have the expertise to connect any student who needs support to the right resource at the right time. Depending on what a student needs, we have the right person in the school to help support those needs. And we're really proud that um, the way that we serve our students in Sarasota County Schools, we've made a commitment to bring more counselors more social workers, and more psychologists into our schools. So all of our schools have those staff members in their buildings every day. Students who need additional support work with our school-wise support teams and our families to identify the appropriate level of support and continually monitor how they're responding to that support. So as adjustments need to be made, we can adjust appropriately. If a student needs something more, we can intensify those services. If a student is doing well and we're able to scaffold back, we do that. But 
the most important thing is that we're having those collaborative conversations and we're always focused on solutions um, as our long-term outcome. This work is so fulfilling, um, Chris, and I'm so appreciative of this conversation um, for me and for the team that I get to work with every day. We are, we are rewarded and affirmed when students come back to us and say, you helped me through a crisis or you helped me find a solution to that problem. And as a result of that partnership, I was able to graduate from college or I made the football team or I was able to be the lead in the school play. And those types of success stories are what keeps our team motivated. We are proud of the work that we do and we're proud of our efforts um, that help promote student success. Deb, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for your invaluable insight on this very important topic. We really appreciate it. And thank you to everybody for listening. If you missed any of our previous episodes, you can find those on our website, sarasotacountyschools.net, and hope you'll join us for the next episode of the In Tune podcast. Podcast.